I'm the trees, yeah, go Hustle, hustle, hustle hard I'm, yeah, whoa I put my foot down if you're a kid that's kind of seeing this video, I want to kind of be like a symbol for you, like everything is going to be okay, like you're going to get through it. Um, this is just a little phase in your life, and it might be it's an awful time. If you're able to see me and just hear me speak to you, if it like settles you at least one bit um, and gives you some sense of hope, even if it's just, even if it's just the slightest bit, like I want to be able to be that. Your life is just getting started. There is light at the end of the tunnel, and like good can come from the worst time, 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 time. Him and his older brother were just playfully wrestling in the living room, and um, his brother kind of landed on his belly, and um, he and Hunter was visibly um, in pain. He cried. Um, I picked him up and, and cradled him, and um, he fell asleep, but when he was sleeping, he was dry heaving, so we knew that something was wrong. We went to a local emergency room and they did a CT scan and uh, they thought we needed to be evaluated by a pediatric nephrologist. So um, they stuck us in an ambulance and we went north to the Children's Hospital at Dartmouth. Um, and right when we walked into the emergency room, the emergency room doctor came out and told me that he had a tumor on his kidney and it had ruptured. And he said, he has cancer, um, you know, Nothing can prepare a parent to hear those words. Um, cancer carries such a, it's such an emotionally charged word. Well, obviously the treatment followed next, so I had my kidney surgically removed, and then following that was um, radiation and then months of chemotherapy. You lose your hair, so I was bald when I was three, and um, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world being bald, I thought it was so special, but I can only imagine what that experience is like for a teenager. Um, or kids in high school or middle school who are just kind of like find themselves and as long as you can kind of find the beauty within it like my mom used to say and she still says today like bald is beautiful so kind of just like embracing what you have and saying yeah like I know what I'm going through and I can still be beautiful and like I, it doesn't matter if I look different like I can still be the same um, I think that's something that you really can kind of buy into and and um, if you can adapt like a positive mindset and really try to find the beauty um, I think that can be a really helpful thing. We're very grateful that we have Hunter with us. Um, but when we were in the hospital, we had two young kids at home still, um, and actually a new puppy. Um, and we had a team of people who um, took care of the kids, took care of the puppy, descended upon our house while we were in the hospital, um, put up a new swing set, put mulch and flowers in, cleaned our house from top to bottom, including the closets. We had a new grill, we had a new dishwasher. Our fridge was stocked. It was just a team of people who surrounded us. We had dinners uh, anonymously delivered um, for the next several months uh, every day while he was in treatment. Um, our friends pulled together and did fundraisers for us. Um, it was just an incredible display of love um, for our family. It's a team battle, it's not just an individual, it takes a whole community to kind of beat this disease. Um, I just, it's, it is very personal to me and I actually got emotional uh, talking with my mom about it because I did learn a lot about what it was like for them going through it, kind of the emotional stress, um, seeing the, the impact and like what it had on my family and kind of the community that kind of built around me. And I like say all the time, it's like, cancer's not a one person battle. Like it takes an entire team, a whole community and um, like I had cancer, but I feel like the fight was with everyone, um, my friends, my family, and um, obviously the hospital and the doctors and stuff like that, so. I'm someone who wasn't even aware of the, of the lack of funding. I feel like it starts with just letting people know about the issue. And working with Lacrosse Out Cancer, which is an organization that directly gets all of its money to cancer research to try to find a cure, so. Um, being able to use lacrosse to push something I'm really passionate about, um, I'm super excited to do it and I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a good step in the right direction for finding a cure for sure. After doing more research um, about lacrosse out cancer, uh, we found out that 47 kids are diagnosed with cancer each day. And so we thought about how, how can we play around with the number 47. So we're actually doing 
47 days of wall ball. And so our wall ball routine each week, Coach Monroe, our assistant coach, uh, puts out a wall ball routine and, and the guys do it about five times a week or so uh, to reach the, the number 47. We're gonna do that in the fall and then we're gonna come back and we're also gonna do it in the spring. And, and we're gonna end uh, our last day or near our last day uh, with the awareness game that we're trying to put together. And hopefully we can raise a lot of money and, and present a check to Lacrosse Out Cancer and the Pediatric Cancer Research Foundation. It just means the world to me, my family, the Colgate Lacrosse family, um, and we really appreciate all your support and donations. From this Colgate Lacrosse mom and mom of a cancer survivor, um, I want to express my heartfelt thank you. On behalf of Colgate Lacrosse, thank you for your generosity.